Welcome back. This is another video in my series on the theory of Python, which covers not only the Python language in detail, it's going to cover, you know, uh, computer science, software development, all that kind of stuff. So this, this is a, something that um, if, if you've done math, so my background is physics, I studied physics and got my degree in the year 2000. Uh, this is one of these concepts that sometimes I think people pay a lot of lip service to, but they don't really have a strong grasp of. And uh, one of the things that I notice is people will be uncomfortable with abstraction. They want to get into the details of something and they don't understand how far abstractions work and how things actually work. Uh, the, so I'm going to introduce kind of some mathematical concepts here to help maybe uh, clear the air a bit about what an abstraction is and why it works. So in mathematics, when I say A equals B, basically uh, in English we'd say A is Okay, what this means is that there's this thing that we call A, and there's this thing that we call B, and that thing is actually the same thing. So let me give you an example of what I mean by that. Suppose that I have over here this weird blobby shape, okay? Okay, and I call this thing A. So I look at it and I say, that is A, okay? Now, if you also call this something, you call it B, then we can say together that A and B are, in fact, the same thing, right? Why is this useful? Well, whenever you see A, you can always put B in. And whenever you see B, you can always put A in. So this principle of substitution is very powerful. This is one of the most basic concepts in mathematics and logic, okay? Now, typically what you see is something like this. You'll see A is equal to B, and there's an asterisk, and the asterisk says, except for. Okay, this is what I might call the leaky abstraction. Okay, there's caveats. It says, it's not quite exactly the same as B, but it's pretty dang close. Okay, and I might say something like A is equal to B, except for some things that I'm not really interested in talking about right now. Okay, but hopefully somebody understands what those exceptions are. Let me give you an example. So five is equal to three. Well, not quite. We actually have to add some other numbers to it. But five and three otherwise are pretty dang similar. Okay, and in this context, you'll notice that Five is an integer, three is an integer, they're numbers, they have very, very similar behavior. The only difference really is that five is two more than three, right? And so we know that that difference is two. Okay, five and three is two, all right? Uh, in computer science, we're going to have things like, you'll say the file is a stream. Well, files aren't really streams and streams aren't really files, but they're very similar. The differences are very few. Okay, let me do some examples right now. Okay, um, a set in mathematics, here's an example of a set, is a collection of items that are different, that are not the same, right? So they're unique inside the set. So I can't have the element two twice in a set. It doesn't make any sense. And the order doesn't matter, right? So in terms of sets, these two things are equal. They are the same thing. But if you look, they don't look the same. That's okay. Okay. Now, if I were to say that here we have a set 1, 2, and that's the same as 1, 2, 3, asterisk, there's obviously a difference. This one has the extra element 3. Okay. But for purposes here, this leaky abstraction is okay because three is not really that important. What's important is that they have one and two. And this happens a lot in computer software. So we'll have an object that has a certain behavior. It can do X, it can do Y. And then we'll have another object that can do X and Y. It can also do Z. Obviously, they're not the same. But their behavior, the set of their behavior, is very similar. It's just one has extra behavior, right? And so we can say that this operation the operations this object supports is the same as the operations those supports, except that one has additional ones. Okay. Um, all right. Let's talk a little bit about uh, interface. 
This is something you'll see a lot, okay? Uh, typically you'll have A, P, I, Application Programming Interface. What is an interface? Well, if you have something over here and you have something over here and they're supposed to combine somehow, okay? Then the interface is the elements of these two things that are relevant for how they combine. Okay, so my example before, if you have an object that does X and Y, and you have another object that does X, Y, and Z, then if you combine those two objects together, the interface is what those two objects would require of each other. So if the first object requires the second object to have X, and the second object requires the first object to have Y, then the interface is that. It's just the parts that they rely on. So an example here is we have an engine, and I'm just gonna draw a block, and on the engine, we have a carburetor. The carburetor's job is to feed air plus fuel into the engine, okay? So the interface between the carburetor and the engine is this. It adds air and fuel mixed together. The engine does not care how the carburetor mixes the air and fuel. In fact, it doesn't care what the thing that sits on top of it is as long as it delivers air and fuel is. You could be having some kind of other device that isn't a carburetor, but as long as it produces air and fuel that it feeds to the engine, the engine won't care, okay? And the interface between these two objects is not just the delivery, but also the shape of the connection between them, okay? So if I have one style of engine and it has a certain shape for the carburetor, if I take a carburetor from that engine and go to another style of engine with a different shape, the carburetor won't fit. It's pretty obvious. But I can probably go to the car store, the auto parts store, and buy an adapter that will allow the carburetor to match the engine by just adjusting the shape. Because the general concept is there, it's pretty trivial to write an adapter or to create an adapter that connects the things together. This brings me to another concept that is very important and one that unless you've studied algebra beyond the elementary school level or the middle school level, I guess, is the idea of composition. What is composition? Well, when we take one plus one and we get two, right? So we're taking this thing and this other thing, which happened to be the same thing, it doesn't matter though, and we're combining them, we're composing them in a particular way to get something new, okay? And so composition, we have the components, and we have the product, okay? So when you're doing computer programming, you're going to see things that can be broken down into components, and those components combine in a particular way. Remember the interface and the API? The way they combine is important, okay? Now, if we have this style of composition, the element that becomes important, I'm gonna circle it with a different color, is this element here, okay? Too often I see programmers, they get so focused on the data and the numbers and the words, and they forget that the program is the bits in between that combines those things together. Okay, so we have to think about these operations. Oftentimes, without even knowing what the components that they'll combine are, we'll have to anticipate new components that might not be exactly the same as the previous components that we've done before. Um, let me give you an example. Okay, so in the operating system, there are files that are called programs, programs with an S, okay? And these have a sequence of bytes that are intended for the CPU to run. So this is basically, they are gonna run on the CPU, okay? Now we're going to write something called Python programs. Okay, these are going to be text files. This is binary. We cannot take the Python programs and put them on the CPU. It won't work. But what we can do is we can feed this to the Python program itself 
who can run it on the CPU. Now, are these Python programs actual programs? No, they're not, because you can't run them on a CPU. But they behave just like programs, as long as you invoke them with the Python binary. So we often call these scripts. But in my career, I didn't think of scripts as anything different than programs. Why? Because they behave exactly like programs. Once you put this adapter in, these text files become things that the CPU can actually run. And this style of composition, where you take an adapter, compose it with something to turn it into behavior or something else, this is very common in programming. All right, I don't know what else to mention here. If you have any questions or other basic mathematical concepts that you think we should cover to understand abstractions, I'm gonna try really hard as we go through the material to expose, like I'm gonna say this is a composition through addition, or this is an interface, and this is the exact interface that's required to make these two components fit together. And we're gonna talk about uh, abstractions a lot. There's gonna be a lot of things that are not what you think they are, right? So you might think if you go into your Python terminal and you type in one and it says one, you might think, oh, that's the number one. That is not the number one. The number one is a mathematical abstract concept that doesn't exist anywhere in the universe, right? What this is, is this is an actual sequence of bytes that exists in your computer. In this case, this one itself is actually probably ASCII or UTF-8 for one, which is some number that isn't, most definitely is not one. Okay, and then inside the computer, this might be represented by a region of memory that has the binary code 00000001. Okay, so I hope you guys will enjoy the mathematics of programming. There's so much of it, there's so much to learn. Uh, the more math you learn, the higher level of math you learn, the easier programming is going to be become. And we'll talk more about that later as we get into those concepts. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, please ask them. I would love to elaborate on these things or include additional information. If there's something I missed, obviously I'd like to add it. Take care, have a good day, and bye-bye. This video is part of a series on the theory of Python. You can click on the left to see the playlist and on the right to support my channel. Thank you very much for your time.